a warm welcome to everyone joining us this morning for the simulation workshop. I am Deborah Ferdinand James, coordinator of the master's program in leadership in technical vocational education and training at the University of the West Indies School of Education, Mona Campus in Jamaica. We at the UWI are quite pleased to embrace this opportunity extended by World Resource Webinars to engage in simulation training with their esteemed team of Industry 4.0 trainers. As we know, Industry 4.0, coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic, have pushed training and education to mostly an online mode of delivery. As such, aspiring leaders in TVET, like our own graduate students, as well as TVET practitioners, need an understanding of how simulations can be used to complement the practical aspects of skill, skills training along with the now limited blocked time for face-to-face -face labs. I would especially like to welcome our colleagues from the Youth Training and Employment Partnership Program, YTAP, and their team leader, Ms. Bishop, which is a highly recognized institution for its excellence in the delivery of skills training in Trinidad and Tobago. Our knowledge collaboration today is transferable to other disciplines. And so we are very happy that World Resources Webinar have allowed us to open up today's training to graduate students in other disciplines. So we welcome you. Today's session will last for an hour and a half, ending around 12 noon Jamaican time and 1 p.m. Trinidad time. I remind you to keep your mics muted during the presentations as we do have a large group and opening the mics would um, cause a lot of feedback. So we would like to reduce any um, disruption there. You also have the option to ask questions or make comments. You can type them in the chat or there's a small smiley face at the bottom of your screen, an icon. If you click on that, you would get the option to raise your hand. And when you do that, uh, I will allow you to speak in order. Um, or Dr. Krishnan, he will also be um, moderate, moderating the chat. The question and answers will be answered during that time allocated by the trainers. And so we just like for you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this opportunity to interact with the World Resources Webinar trainers. I, I now take great pleasure in handing you over to the simulation team of Industry 4.0 trainers from India. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. And um, welcome uh, my friends, uh, Dr. Amarnath, Dr. Kalirajan, and uh, Arvind. Along with that, um, all friends from across the world, uh, including West Indies, who are the main core uh, participants of this workshop. Uh, friends, let me share my screen and then uh, keep start uh, talking to you. I'm sharing my screen. Can you see it? One of yes, you can, can. prompt. Yeah, thank you. Uh, friends, uh, this is the team of trainers you're going to have today. Uh, Dr. Amarnath, uh, who is a BIM specialist and a digital transformation specialist who has traveled all across the world. And um, he is heading the BIM Academy of LNT. And he is yeah, having a lot of communities uh, uh, who's, who are being developed on the digital transformation. Along with them, uh, we have uh, Arvind, uh, you know, who's a um, CAD specialist computer-aided uh, designing specialist. He has a great hands-on experience in simulation 
and he's going to share us a lot of things which he has done on his own, not only for himself, but he is also a technopreneur. He is developing to become an entrepreneur of him uh, by himself at a younger age. Uh, encouraging him, uh, we also have uh, Dr. Kali Rajan, who happened to be my um, classmate uh, in engineering along with him. Uh, Dr. Kali Rajan is a nuclear specialist. He has been implementing a lot of uh, nuclear plants in India and across the world. He is well known in construction field. He is a project management specialist. And um, along with him, I'm going to do uh, the kind of uh, a coordination and the push up of this simulation. I'm Dr. Umay Chandran. I'm general manager in Elcast, and I'm uh, you know, coordinating this uh, uh, world resource webinar sessions. As per industry 4.0 and uh, onto simulation, simulation is the first topic in industry 4.0. So coming on to it, what happens is, you know, when uh, people want to have a kind of a simulation, it's a kind of a pretentious scenario. You know, people want to have something uh, they don't want to test themselves on real, real water. They want to do something abstract, which is something nearest to real, and then people want to do it. Uh, you know, when um, Dr. Debra was asking about uh, this simulation workshop, we, you know, we were open enough to accept and push it, push it through. The reason is everyone learns, learns, and we simulate our learning through group interactions. And Corona plus or minus though it has a lot of uh, you know, negatives to it, it has helped us in making the digital learning come through in, uh, you know, across the world. And the whole world is almost on the same plank. Ex I know earlier, uh, the Western countries were more and the Eastern was less, but now the digital, digital divide is completely lost. As we proceed, I wish to give you a small tip, like even Dr. Debra had introduced earlier. As we proceed, we welcome your inputs. You know, because that is the one which can give us the opportunity to customize our delivery. Or otherwise, we will be talking something and something may not suit you. Ultimately, learning is for the development of people. And so we want to take your inputs as we progress through. Coming on to the content or the objective of this program, simulation, if you say, it's a pretentious scenario, which I said in the early, early stage itself. It's an imitation, right? It's not a real thing, it's an imitation. It actually starts on a drawing board. You don't do things straight away, brick and mortar, but you make things come on a drawing board. Then you plan, then you go on for a product evolution or a process evolution or a service evolution. I'll attach it to quality, safety, hazards, maintenance, and the progressivity of productivity, yield, etc. And then you launch it. That's where simulation is. Simulation helps us in a lot of educational and in specializational programs and processes. It is a similar one, which is not real. It, is, it can be handled in a real space or even in a virtual space. See, what you have to do is you can have simulation for helping us grow knowledge, improve our skills, and take care of the attitudinal preparation. Because when human beings are put into place and they are the ones who are going to churn out the in a run of our organization, they are the ones who need to be channelized. And an employee, before being put onto a real job, the simulation is the one which really prepares him to be a real contributor to an organization. Okay, then why simulation? Simulation has a lot of possibilities. You can go on doing errors. Errors are acceptable because nobody can become a fine craftsman unless he learns through errors. Error is a, the learner, the teacher, which, has, uh, you know, which gives us the importance of fine tuning our skills. So a lot of possibilities can be handled. We can have a lot of iterations. You go cycle by cycle. You do one method, you model it, you, met, you method another, and again model it, and you go on for iterations until you are confidentially positioned to deploy it on a real time basis. Adding to it, Today, computers and digital transformation has occurred everywhere. So we can do simulation on a virtual background, need not be on a real background or a real space background. We can do it virtual background. That is where Corona has helped us to be connected throughout the world. With a small introduction of simulation, I'll take you up to the categorization of simulation. There are many things that go on in simulations like 
uh, you know, analog, you have digital, design, and process. These four categorization, I would try to push you through so that you can understand, assimilate, and try to apply it to your own space, where my fellow colleague trainers will be helping you out with a lot of tools and uh, appendages that can be used for simulations. Coming on to analog. Analog is nothing but a kind of a hardware connectivity. You had an analog watch with, with a, you know, uh, two needles going around a, a point where the mechanism positions us for different times. Analog is a real time one. It's a hard hardware. We, in our childhood, we have learned a lot of things using toys. We played games and we did a lot of jigsaws, puzzles, riddles, playing uh, you know, carom boards, chess, and many, many games and all. All these things have started giving us a lot of learning into us, and it has developed us to a mature level. As we mature and coming on to a place where real toys and games may not be put, uh, available for everything, so we started using case studies, we had scenarios, we had in-basket exercises, we had working circuits, fluidic circuits, air circuits, pneumatic circuits, electric circuits, and all these things were all helping us to learn. This is where analog simulation comes. This is a nutshell of this analog simulation. Coming on to the next one called the digital simulation. Everyone today has a mobile phone, which is having a, a opportunity to get using uh, internet and we connect with the uh, you know, uh, web world. And uh, at uh, office or home, we have uh, desktops and uh, computers where we, we are onto using the digital uh, and, um, uh, processes that has helped us to grow up to now. See, digital transformation uh, or digital simulation starts with sketches. If you have anything in your mind, you visualize, you do a kind of a drawing, you make a kind of a chart, you make a kind of a flow chart, and these flowcharts, drawings, et cetera, may be static, but with the use of computers, you can make it dynamic. And it can be either in a two-dimensional two or three-dimensional figures, or now you can also have animations coming onto it. So digital transformation is available. And this digital simulation, which has uh, you know, also created a lot of economy for uh, you know, computer specialists, there are a lot of market available simulation tools like AutoCAD, SolidEdge, CATIA, Rhino, MATLAB, MCDesigner, many things are available. All these are licensed. If you want to use, you want to learn, you want to practice, you want to uh, and come through it, that means you have to go through the rigorous process of learning and then pick it up. Though we'll be sharing you a lot of things, what can be done through, uh, through uh, CAD simulations, but this is a catch which uh, you know, the, the manual, I mean, the product owners do not give us free. We can help you, we can take, but it has to be owned by somebody who can teach you. Next is the design simulation. Design, you know, it, it's like, you know, if you want to create a kind of a product, you divide it into modules, then you take, you know, subdivide it into systems, then see internally what are the sub-assemblies, and then what makes them that's the components. And then you design each of this and see the fitment to it so that the whole sim comes into a place. If you want to make a design simulation, what happens is there are many uh, you know, simulational holds. One is the parametric, and then second is the non-parametric. Parametric in the sense, you know, if you can see, observe, or control, and which is explicit and uh, to be controlled, then it is called a parametric uh, in a factor. If it is a non-parametric factor, it is a felt one. It can be uh, in a, uh, latent, like for example, satisfaction in a training program or satisfaction in your service or expectations of a customer. All these are non-parametric that can also be simulated. Then coming on to the components, uh, you, know, you, you need to have something measurable. If you have identified something measurable, then it is controllable and then it can be made into a real fact. So we have components of scientific involvement and mathematical, I mean, formations that can also go into these kind of a simulation called design simulation. The last one is the process simulation. Process simulation is like a kind of, you know, what happens in a uh, organization, like in a manufacturing setup or an assembly setup or in a banking setup or in a re restaurant or a tourism setup or whatever, wherever it is. If you have 
castings to be made, forgings to be done, assemblies to be made. You want to find the micro motion of a you know, hand movement or the machine movement. All these things can be process simulated and also in service because that, that is where the latent uh, param non-parametric uh, aspects can also be taken into consideration for process. See, process simulation, I'll give you a small example uh, before uh, concluding this process. See, for example, you hire a person and you say, you want to take uh, you know, uh, this person to move from point A to point B, and it should be done within five minutes. For example, you're going to give him a post or a mail, and this person has to take this mail and drop it in another location, which is five minutes. So the cover weight may be very less. It's about you know, hardly about five grams or three grams or whatever it is. Same person, if he is going to be given 15 kilograms to be carried between uh, you know, within five minutes and delivered, and the distance between them is approximately, for example, 25 kilometers, then you need to see what are the modes on which he can do. The process is, can he walk around and deliver it within 25 kilometers, within five minutes and a five kg? Or he bicycles himself and uh, you know, delivers, or he moves through a rope car and he delivers, or you provide him a motor vehicle and he de delivers, or you don't have, have the hassle of a human being, can he be given drone so that the drone comes and picks it up and drops it using a GPS in a position where it is to be delivered? So all these things, the dimensional input of MLT, M means you, you have your mass, length, and time. If you want to ca calculate it and do it, you can do it on a process simulation or scientific. You know, you cover it as I sh showed you on the example. Okay, all these things are all getting on to simulations. But all these learnings can only be, be beneficial only when it is being applied. Use is always felt in many applications, but we have identified somewhere around six of which we'll try to take you through maximum, but not MATLAB. MATLAB, uh, you know, we don't have that uh, software with us. And uh, it, it, you know, this was to be done by Dr. Shilpa from New Zealand. Uh, she couldn't handle this. So all the other five, we are going to handle it to you today. Okay, we are going to take you through CAD. We are going to take you through sim project simulations, building simulations, uh, and a kind of a medical simulation or a, a service uh, uh, in a moment, and then the enterprise resources, which is again a uh, software oriented. Okay, coming on to uh, uh, in a West Indies specific, Jamaica specific. You know, then you are on to a tourism segment where the total economy of the country is towards tourism. That means you need to apply these four P's. Either you have a product or a service that has to give you money. And that product gives you a specific money, which is called the price. And to where it has to be serviced or you know, given to is the place. And then the promotion, what kind of a reach you can have on the people. These four, people, uh, four P's are the more important part for a tourism. See, tourism is not a fun. It's a serious business. Every country, though it is affected by Corona, but the things will change, they have a lot of tourisms. It's not only fun. It has medical tourism with surgeries, artificial limbs, transpl transplantation of organs and many things. You have health uh, uh, you know, uh, tourisms like bone setting, aboriginal treatments, uh, spa, leisure, wellness, and uh, many, many things go on. You have educational tourism like fairs, board meetings, business visits, conferences, and all this stuff. And then the exploratory ones, you go on uh, finding out what's happening in the nature, you cross across the poles, North Pole and South Pole, you discover, and there is something called spiritual tourism also. And then coming on to the ecotourism, getting on what is happening in the forest, animals, for herbs, organics, fruits, and all these developments which go on. So tourism is not only for fun, it has a lot of value and that is being connected today. Coming on to it, uh, the backpacks of uh, tourism. Tourism has transportation, it has drop points, it has destination. It, of course, covers FNB food and beverages. It gives you accom accommodation, event, tourist operations, sustainability, and attractions. But all this at what cost? See, tourism cannot have a fixed price. It can have only a, strat a strategy of differential pricing. So it is based on competition, it goes on with the penetration of the business bundling of various things together and the psychological impact, which adds value to a person who wishes to buy the service or product 
and then they go on. So to handle all these factors, simulation is a better of tool that can help you through the process of making a win in a business enterprise. Coming down, I'll give you a small thing which, has which is now really happening in the world. In Industry 4.0, there are many technologies of which virtual and augmented re uh, reality technologies are taking a very good chunk for countries like West Indies. Like in, uh, in a win of virtual reality, what you can do is you can design a virtual tour even before you get a, 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 you know, a tourist to get committed to your process. It's not a, you know, a short word. Uh, it, it need not be enticing, but you bring them, you lure them with all the things and you, uh, you know, appetize them to really get into involved. So you get them to make a real picture of what they are going to go through with because tourism is more of a feel through. It's, it's not written down or it cannot be explained. It's a feel how you have to get it. So you need to have a pictures, videos, topographies, names, buildings, and all those real settings collected together. You make it into a kind of a program and then where the sense of immersion is really transferred to the uh, uh, person who is going to become a potential tourist, they feel the surroundings, they make it, get into a similar environment because they can see the shape, sounds, and the natural environment. And this is where the virtual reality comes into place. All these are all programmed and it is available and it has taken its position. But now who starts learning fast is the one who's going to do it. Okay, not only virtual reality, there are a lot of things that can go on further. For now, I stop. Thank you for uh, being patient to hear me. If you have any queries, you can ask me right away or you can park yourself Till the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Krishnan. I will just ask if anyone wants to make a comment or a question at this point before we continue. And you have just wet our appetite, uh, Dr. Krishnan. <laughs> uh, very much so. We, we, we have a lot to think about now as you have um, introduced us to the virtual tourism and what is possible. Okay, can we go further and then uh, I'll uh, make people think through also when they come out with questions we can Yes, right. yes, sure. So, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Uh, I mean, Arvind, can you please take it up? Yes, sir. Hmm. I'm sharing my screen. Please. Arvind, you're Hi. on mute. I'm Arvind. Uh, Arvind, you're on mute. The is on CAD simulation. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi. I'm Arvind. My presentation is on CAD simulation. What is CAD? CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. And we know simulation is imitation of a real world process or system. First, we will design a virtual model using computer. Then we will imitate and test the virtual model to predict its behavior in real world condition. But why? Why we need to create a virtual model and stimulate it using a CAD program instead of manufacturing and testing a real model. To understand that, we need to see the steps involved in creating a product. To run simulation, we need model. To create a model, we need design. Before design, we need ideas to create a product. Basically, it is a cyclic process. The cyclic process will continue until the product meets our requirement. The main objective of each step is to improve the product. To explain each step quick and clear, as an example, I will use this off-road sport vehicle which I did with my friends a few years ago. Let us start from creating an idea for the product. 
If it is a new product, we got no option. We need to develop it from scratch. But if it exists, we can get inspiration from it. We need to improve the product by fixing its downside. To save time, we can limit ourselves by deciding what to buy and what to manufacture. Items like engine, tire, rim, seat, suspension and other raw materials that are required for the manufacturing process was bought for our off-road vehicle. So we need not spend time on designing and testing this item. Parts like the main frame, gearbox, steering box, brake disc, wheel hub were manufactured by us. So we need to design and test them. After creating an idea for the product, let us proceed to the design stage. In this stage, we will add more details to our idea. Like making a preliminary sketch to understand the idea. As a next step, we did a miniature model with broomsticks to fill the design. Then we made a layout around us and sat in the driving position to get the dimension for the frame. Using this dimension, we created a model using PVC pipe to get a clear big picture of what we were making. Next, we designed a custom gearbox to get the maximum speed and torque from the engine we bought. We made lot of calculations to get a perfect gear ratio. As I have shown, we need to design all the parts that we have planned to manufacture. But in this design process, there are some data that we need to make assumptions. Like maximum weight, what material to use for each part. These data can be found only after the model or simulation stage. Once we are done with the design, let's proceed to the next stage. In this stage, we will convert our design to a CAD model instead of fabricating a real model. We need a CAD program to perform this operation. Programs like SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, AutoCAD, Creo can perform both modeling and simulation. Programs like Optimum Kinematics, Hyperworks, ANSYS, MATLAB and Simulink are more simulation focused program. Each program has its own ups and downs. SOLIDWORKS and Inventor are my favorite programs as they have a good user interface. Most CAD programs follows this model structure. Sketch, part and then assembly. Sketching is the first step in modeling using a CAD program. First we need to create a sketch and then we can convert the sketch into a part. I have already made the sketch of the mainframe. By using the pipe feature in the CAD program, we can convert the sketch to a part. Let me show you on another example. This is the sketch of the disc brake. Now by using the extrude feature in the CAD program, we can add material to convert this sketch to a part. To assemble the parts, we need to provide mates between them. Mate is nothing but the relation between each part. It helps the software to understand the relation. Let me demonstrate mate by assembling the suspension part. I need the silver part to move concentric inside this brown cylinder. When I select this both parts, CAD program asks me to select a mate. When the concentric layer program understands it. Now the silver part will move concentric inside the cylinder. Using the same concentric relation, let's make this black cap with this brown cylinder. With concentric relation. To stop the movement of this cap, 
I want this surface to intersect with the top surface of this brown cylinder. When I select both the surfaces, CAD program wants me to provide a relation. I am selecting the intersection mate. Look how simple it is. As I demonstrated, we need to provide mates to assemble each part. I am not showing all the assembly shot to save time. After completing the model, we can use it to run simulations. There are many kind of simulation that can be performed with the computer. Let me demonstrate some of them. To find the mass of an part or an assembly, first we need to specify a material. I am selecting 4130 chrome steel as a material for the pipe. Now we can see the mass of the part even without manufacturing a real model. We can use this mass instead of the assembly mass from the design stage. As we have provided mates to assemble each part, we can perform a motion study of moving parts. Like working of the suspension system with its links and turning the wheels. We can also simulate the rotation parts like rotation of the gears inside the gearbox and see how the power is getting transmitted to the wheels. To find whether our design is safe or not, we need to perform structural test. Imagine this situation, a vehicle hits a wall or gets hit from another vehicle or falls from a height. The amount of import force will be great. So we need to run structural stimulation to test the model. All the condition which we were imagined will fall under dynamic structural test. We will imitate the same scenario of the impact by considering the model to be in motion during this test. We can run the dynamic test with a simple model like spoon or a box. But in this vehicle model, there are several complicated parts that are assembled together. We need a supercomputer to run this dynamic test, which we can't run just now. So, let's perform a static structural test. In this static structural test, the model will be fixed stationary and will be subjected to a force. To simplify the simulation process, we will test each part separately and calculate the maximum impact force by To run this structural test, we need to select the area of impact and input the calculated maximum impact force. Then the program does the work for us. We can see the results in the form of animation. The red color represents the region that took more damage. Let's perform the structural test for the gearbox. As there are very few moving parts inside this gearbox, I have performed a dynamic structural test. This is the animated result of the dynamic test. Using these results, we can improve the product by making changes to the dimension and changing the material. This brake and this brake caliper play a major role in stopping the wake of it. While braking, a great amount of heat will be generated in the disc brake due to friction. We can simulate the same scenario and see how the disc handles the heat. In fluid analysis, we will simulate the flow of fluid elements like air and water. For example, this is an exhaust fan that you can find on a desktop PC. To check the design efficiency of the fan blade, 
we can simulate the app flow and get results to improve the design. We can select custom appearances to the product and render it. So we can see how the product will actually look even before painting it. There are more simulations that can be performed using a computer. I only have demonstrated some of them. Now we can understand the need for CAD simulation. Just imagine a situation. After simulation, we came to know that moving this pipe a little above will make the frame much stronger. If we did the real model, we can do it easily. We need to cut the pipe and then rebuild it, which consumes both time and money. But in a CAD model, we can make the changes easily. During our off-road vehicle improvement process, we did six improvement cycles. If we haven't used a CAD program, we would have ended up with making six real vehicles. And we need to test each part in the real world condition to ensure the safety, which is very risky. So, it saves time, saves money, and makes the complicated task simple. I am ending this presentation here. I hope you learned something new from this presentation. Thank you, Aravind. Yes, indeed. We are very impressed with uh, how the simulation can help us really um, reduce risk and save cost and time in uh, trying and innovating with new products and services. So definitely we have learned a lot. If there are any questions, we are open also, Deborah. Okay, so you can either raise your hand, participants. There's a icon, a reaction icon to the bottom there. If you have questions, you raise your hand and I'll allow you to speak um, in order or in sequence of your raised hand. And if you do have a headset, I will suggest you use that so that um, you can hear everything that's, that's happening. Okay, we go ahead, uh, Deborah. Okay, sure. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Uh, Amarnath. Yeah, hi, sir. I'm just sharing my screen. One second. Well, uh, thank you to Krishnan Ji and also uh, for the UWI team for bringing me on board for the discussion today. It's it's more of a multidisciplinary discussion. I can see that how the tourism industry works, also how the, the automobile industry works. And now I'll be discussing with you on the construction sector, where you'll be dealing with the buildings, infrastructures, and cities, and you know, more of the built environment. So in, in fact, uh, simulation is also very important in this sector, where uh, if, you, uh, if you don't use that simulations or build the virtual models, you may end up with rework and waste of time and cost reduce of the quality and a lot of other issues, like how Arvind has uh, described before this session. So in, in fact, there's a lot of transformation happening in these lines uh, in the global sector, uh, especially in the construction sector too, like a digital transformation or the kind of simulations is, a, um, is part of day-to-day -day journey in the global sector. And for the construction sector, it's never behind. Now we are working on these lines and it has been realized that a lot of benefits can be uh, gained from uh, doing such simulations. We call that as building information modeling in the construction sector. Some people call it as a digital uh, twin in these areas. It's all about adding the information into the models, the virtual models, and then uh, using it for different simulations. I'll just discuss on the, those areas also. 
So we'll be having three topics today to discuss with you how this transformation in the construction sector is happening. The first, at a macro level, it's more at a market level uh, at the different countries. And then MESO, which is at an organization specific. It may be design, contractor, subcontractor, project management, consulting, you know, client organizations. A micro, which is more at a project specific, how the BIM implementations happen at a project level, what kind of new technologies are there today, and so on. So, well, uh, we, 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 we are part of uh, cities, right? And uh, there are uh, kind of future cities which are coming, um, which can be the upgradation of the existing cities, or also it can be new cities that are getting built. We, and these are the key enablers for having a um, future cities or the smart cities, whatever we call the artificial intelligence, driverless cars, circular economy, smart agriculture, increased automation, virtual reality, uh, integrated planning, value data, and digital twins, internet of things. These are very common things which are coming up as a part and parcel of the smart, smart city developments. And today I'll be discussing more of this digital twins um, and uh, how the VR, IoT and automation, all of these are coming together. It's all about the data management and using the data for different simulations in the construction sector. So today we speak about different uh, terminologies in the construction sector. Um, initially it started with the handmade drawings and then the 2D CAD drawings and things. And then today we have uh, the digital models of all the facilities built before the construction happened. And the same models will be used for linking with the internet of things for the facility management, which can, which can help you reduce the cost, um, roughly 10% of the construction cost and another 10% during the operation cost, which is going to really help in better facility management and also during construction. So 3D printing, which is very common to, uh, today, it may be for a prototypes or also for the real buildings. Uh, drone usage is also common in the construction sector these days. And also during the construction activities, there's several equipments which can automate that kind of um, activities on the site. And also we do build the digital models for the facilities, which can be used for different kinds of simulations like um, coordinations, uh, time planning, cost planning, monitoring, safety, quality, procurement, logistics, XYZ things. And laser scanning is also kind of um, activity which happens. Now you want to restore any facility or you want to do some innovation or you want to capture the as is situations on the site, you can uh, capture this laser scan point cloud and then convert it into the digital models and prefabrication is happening only because uh, you have the models and you can integrate with the uh, fabrication procedures you know, th these are some of the terms which you will hear in the digital sector in the construction industry and looking into the global sector in these lines uh, in terms of bim it's about building the information into the model building is not a noun but it's a verb it's about adding the information into the digital models and then using it for multiple simulations. So uh, way back from past two decades, I can say from probably uh, from 15 years at least, 2007, eight, then 10, up to 15, 20, now it's further going into most of the construction sector, national authorities in the global market are mandating that, okay, you have to follow the digital way forward. If you have to bid for the project and if you want to use it for further delivery, you have to deliver as a digital model uh, at the handover phase of the project so that we can use it for further uh, facility management. So when you deliver a physical facility, also need to deliver a digital asset of how it has been built and all the updates in that. So this kind of mandates are happening in the global sector uh, for the, the digitalization and that's where the construction industry digital transformation is happening. Today, the clients are asking, I need this, then all the architecture, engineering, construction companies has to deliver it. And that's where the digital transformation journey has to happen. And I'm like an agent for that digital transformation journey in our Indian AC sector. Looking into these kind of initiatives, like uh, all the professional bodies, they have their forums. Uh, similarly, for the BIM and digital, we do have multiple forums in different countries, roughly 50 forums coming from 40 countries. And the education on these lines are very important. That's where... Um, uh, if you get into the architecture, uh, civil, mechanical, electrical, uh, construction management, real estate, 
uh, the legal departments, business management, uh, they, they do have the BIM education in their uh, programs, which are uh, interdisciplinary. Um, and also uh, speak, speaking about the real situations and bringing the right life projects and working on them. And uh, we, we do have an uh, digital um, NGO, it's a non-governmental organization in our country. It's called India BIM Association, which is supporting for the national level digital transformation, which we, we focus on organizing events on these lines and um, uh, pro provide the awareness in the universities and also for the clients and also develop the standards to adopt it and implement it and then take it further and help in startup developments. So today, uh, if you look into the construction sector, uh, you, you will have to work with all of these field players. Like if you have to provide that, then you, want, you need to have the technology vendors, you need to have the industry people, and you need to have the policy field. So when I say technology, it may be like a software providers for the construction sector, hardware network, and also for the process, it's all about the industry. It may be architecture, engineering, construction, subcontracting, um, government agencies, and the clients, user, uh, end users, all of these people. And the policy, it's all about the regulatory bodies, education institutes, R&D centers. So if you have to support in the smart cities and the built environment digitalization, it's very much critical to uh, get these divisions integrated to get together. And that's where this kind of NGOs do in the global sector. I think um, we, we have to mute the mics. I get the, some disturbance on the back end. Yeah. So getting into the um, organization level, I'm just taking one example of a company. I, I work for one of the contractor called Lazan and Tubro, which is based in uh, India, but it do have the projects getting delivered in 30 to 40 countries, especially for uh, buildings and factories, transportation, heavy civil, kind of power transmissions, water treatments and geostructures, smart cities, and renewable, uh, renewable energy projects. And looking at an organization specific, how, how the transformation happens. So uh, it, as I was speaking in the previous session, it's all about the return on investment when you get into this kind of simulation. First of all, why do you need to do this kind of simulations? As uh, Arvind was also speaking about, uh, if you don't do that, and if you get into the project, then you will have the rework, which is going to add on extra cost for your budget and also wastage of time and overheads. The same way for the construction sector, if you look into the different phases of the project, the design, construction of the facility and the operation and maintenance, and then the dismantling. So when you go with the simulation, uh, that's where this uh, the blue curve comes in, the costing part. When the red curve comes in, it's like when you don't go with the digital way, then the, there's a costing. Uh, this clearly shows that uh, by using the digital way and doing all the possible simulations, you'll be able to reduce that kind of uh, cost, like CapEx, which is 10% of the cost reduction in the construction, and also 10% during the operation. So which is a, a big value for the contractors and also for the clients who are uh, going with these simulations. And it's also going to get different benefits like time savings, material savings, cost savings, health and safety improvements, reduce the risk, which uh, you can do the simulations and reduce this kind of risk. And also you'll be able to use the assets uh, in a better way and also it can improve the reputation in the market for your organizations when you're delivering uh, or when you are already transformed into the sector. And how do you do this? It's not about you know bringing in one software and build a team on that software and then they go ahead. It's, a, it's about a transformation journey because today, uh, every day there's a transformation happening. Today you may be uh, looking into something, tomorrow there is some new technologies in, in place. So uh, we have to look in what is that kind of developments happening globally and locally and with your partners, with your competitors, and with your client's expectation, and what is your current capabilities in an organization, develop your strategic roadmap, and uh, build the capabilities in an organization on the same line so that your company can match your client requirements. Mm -hmm. And for doing this, you would be required to focus on what kind of IT infrastructure you have and what kind of uh, uh, infrastructure has to be built, and the kind of standard workflows to be set and the kind of communications that people will have and what platforms do they use for that. And the most important is, thing is about the data which gets generated during different phases of the project, how the data is getting managed in the project. Because when I'm speaking about the construction sector and the automation uh, or the automobile industry, they're totally two different sectors. Like in the construction sector, the things are unique. The products are very unique. And in the automobile or other industry, industrial, 
it's a one kind of uh, product and gets repeated you know so the the kind of data and information which is getting managed in this stages are plenty of them and when if not well managed you will have a lot of challenges during the next phases of the project and that's where the kind of digital technologies today the beam technologies are helping them for better management of that data and uh, to to be clear there are more than 300 plus software application for in the construction sector from the vendors like autodesk bentley trimble desault acker excel uh, multiple solutions are there and they are used for different activities some some are used to develop the models and then they use the software for the time simulations and then the cost simulation and then the safety structural analysis wind analysis earthquake analysis and lighting analysis it may be for uh, progress monitoring of the data and the project on the site and then uh, delivering the projects and then the facility management demolition and recycling several activities are done so it's again the same kind of digitalization and simulations in the construction sector and looking into the construction sector you will have a multiple departments like uh, you will have a design department planning and quantity surveying department tendering and contracts safety and quality uh, procurement and supply chain form work project execution and multiple other departments so all these departments have a role for digitalization in their journey they have different technologies for following up in for their activities so uh, these are the kind of transformation which are happening in the construction sector and looking into the kind of what does client expect in the projects right so with respect to digital transformation clients have a clear set of items we call it as a bim menu card uh, which is for design construction and operation so clients make a decision okay i want the digitalization and simulation for so and so activities and based on that we have to provide them uh, services on those lines and then uh, looking into the kind of requirements for that so you need a uh, workable workstations and today during this pandemic people are also working on a virtual machine so that people can keep working on their um, existing uh, workstations or pcs but having a better configuration and also um, at a micro level when i come in project level because when you speak about projects here we are speaking about an airports healthcare or it may be for a commercial residential buildings it may be for a metro projects high speed train projects it may be for a power transmission lines and water treatments and uh, institutional buildings uh, multiple kind of projects including the whole ecosystem which is a smart cities so there is a lot of uh, stakeholders coming into picture and it's about how we support each other in this sector uh, for the design construction companies contractors and other companies and how do they transform in this sector and how support each other in the journey so i'm just show, sharing you some example slides of how the digitalization was adopted in our company this from the uh, one of the sector in our uh, company on more on buildings and factories and this is for uh, heavy heavy civil works you know uh, they they do develop the models for all the project requirements and they they use it for multiple simulations and this so that they can reduce the uh, uh kind of risk uh, involved during the construction activities and also can reduce the risk uh, or the cost savings can be done and also have a better uh, safety uh, measures can be taken on the site and also uh, the data that gets developed can be shared among multiple stakeholders in the supply chain and we we do use multiple um, devices for this kind of digital transformation one is a drone which is, which are used commonly for the uh, the survey on the site and also for capturing the data and also can be used for the progress monitoring and uh, these are the laser scanners which um, we have multiple types of scanners some are for indoor scanners for the facility and some for the outdoor and also some are uh, you know you can hold in the hand and you can walk around and you can collect, collect the uh, as is situations as a point cloud from the uh, existing facilities and then comes this kind of uh, robot dogs where they 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 are the automated they walk into the construction sites they can capture the situations and then also can help you uh, in the quality monitoring and also uh, using some kind of tablets uh, ipads and this kind of things where you can you have developed the digital model and you are over imposing that on the site to know is it matching as what you have planned and what is getting implemented is it all aligned or not if if we are behind the schedule or we are ahead of the schedule it will also help aligning on those lines and this is kind of um, uh, projection systems where once you develop the digital models you can have a 
walk through you can have a better experience of what is going to be constructed later so which which has integration for multiple technologies and these are kind of uh, devices which are used for uh, indoor scanning uh, in the facilities where you collect the point cloud and then you don't need to go on the on the site and do the measurements but you can take these models back to the computers and do the measurements and uh, this is again a smart construction helmets which are connected with augmented reality where you can have a overimpose of the physical and the real uh, situations and then comes exoskeletons which will you know, improve your uh, capabilities to lift different equipments and these are construction automation uh, equipments which can do the uh, MEP installations like you know what kind of pipings to be done what are the positioning you just need to feed the model and the data and they they carry on their work automatically which can reduce a lot of uh, manpower interventions and uh, just a small uh, video to play here for you this is about how the the italian team uh, for their uh, smart city level digital transformation they are doing um, it includes uh, the complete digital model developed for some of the cities in the italy uh, using some of these digital techniques uh, including for uh, infrastructure projects building sector projects so uh, you just need to get into these models, click on the elements, and then they know what is that situation. And you have multiple sensors in the in the projects in different devices. You need the data to be captured. You can just click on the models. You can click on the elements, and you get the data directly. You don't need to go on the site or the two-dimensional platforms to collect the data. So this is a level of digital transformation which is happening, uh, especially at the city levels. You know, um, which has all the detailed models, what are the current situations, what kind of progress monitoring is happening, uh, what kind of situations are there, what kind of, because when you see at a city level or even a building at building level, you have thousands and thousands of uh, IoT sensor data devices, which has to be, which will, uh, which given on a one single platform, you can uh, come together uh, on a common data environment. You can look into these models and click on the equipment and know the real data and what's happening. So in fact, you have to use multiple solutions. It's not like one software for the complete life cycle, but you have um, roughly 15 to 20 softwares that you have to use across the supply chain in the project. Uh, it depends on what kind of job role you play in the construction sector. If you are a designer, you are an architect, you are a sexual um, expert, or you are a uh, mechanical electrical plumbing designer, or you are a contractor, you are a construction manager, or you are an estimator, you are a quantity surveyor, you are a project management consultant, you are a green building consultant, you are a client, you are a user, you are a facility management expert, you know, different people have a different softwares to work on, but um, there are already a solutions for a complete life cycle and also for all the types of projects. It may be for a building sector, for infrastructure or for the cities. You have multiple solutions, but the only thing is you have to understand which softwares are really workable for you. And then you can uh, import the data from the previous person. Maybe a designer gives the data for the construction team and the construction teams gives the data for the operation team. So that kind of um, uh, exchange of the data can happen in this digital world. And then the complete life cycle of the life cycle management can be performed using this kind of um, digital solutions in the construction sector. Including the measurement, you, you don't need to go on the site for the, any measurements or if you want to do some leveling and things, you just need to get into this uh, model data and you get all the information done there. It's like a digital uh, city of your real city you know, with all the information that you need on one place. So there are multiple solutions this is one of the interesting video which I thought I can share with you to know about much on uh, the AC sector. Um, so well, uh, this is a very short presentation because it's a limited 14 to 15 minutes time slot. So any queries, you're welcome to ask me now. Yeah. This is Dr. Deborah. I was wondering about the exoskeleton. Is that very expensive and could it be used outside of the, you know, the, the big, big system, the whole big digital transformation? Could it be used, um, you know, at the ground level in construction sites? Mm -hmm. 
yeah the exoskeleton is not really full it's not fully for digital side but i'm just sharing about the latest technologies or the equipment which are available for it transformation to happen great great is it very costly uh, i'm not check for the costing for that maybe i need to okay. explore and get back to you on that pricing because different <laughs> uh, manufacturers would have a different kind of exoskeletons okay could you go back to that slide and just um elaborate a bit for us uh, how it can be used you know without the digital transformation uh, you mean the exoskeleton yes please yeah there it is uh, well uh, i don't know we, we, the, there's no much of digital transformation in this exoskeleton i'm just sharing about different equipments we have oh okay. the most oh. important thing is this is adding an extra power for a uh, human to lift heavy equipments okay great thank you it, it's one of the advancements in the latest uh, development in the country in the region sure sure thank you uh, two people have raised their hands yeah uh, people can unmute and uh, talk Okay. Okay. So my name is Natalie Bishop. I'm a training specialist. I just want to find out that um, in our world, uh, we do have construction training, but it's not as advanced. But we will have like um, building electrical and maybe plumbing. How, what type of should would you suggest um, for level one training of um, digital training that we should include now in these training sessions as to meet you know the demands for the future of this BIM development? Okay. What should uh, we just, consider now? Uh, Ms. Bishop, just explain what is um, level one, what, what level we're at when we say level one, yeah. Okay, so it's an introductory level training into the construction industry. So it's like uh, for electricians and plumbers, and it's, you know, people who are now coming into the construction industry, um, tireless, but I see the need of blending these traditional skills with technology. So I'm saying, what would you recommend that we should introduce as some of the concept of digital transformation in these um, introductory courses? Okay, okay. The first and foremost thing is, uh, they, they, they should have a clarity on what is the kind of global trends? What, what is the kind of developments happening? That, that should be one of the area. And also uh, further going deeper into their uh, division, what, what are the kind of job roles they do currently and what way they do? And further, what are the new technologies available for their sector, especially for uh, the BIM solutions? And going deeper into those technologies for the implementation. When it comes to a technology, uh, there are some kind of open BIM solutions and also the closed BIM solutions. Uh, I would recommend more of a open BIM solutions, which will help them for uh, data interoperability, which will not have any kind of data issues later when they have to integrate with other supply chain team. And uh, it, it again depends on um, uh, what is the kind of manpower. If it's more of a design team, there are kind of BIM solutions available for the design activities from each of the tech vendors. And if it's for the construction activities, if, if a person is from a safety or for a quality or for a contracts, uh, or it may be for a construction management or a quantity surveyors, or it may be uh, the MEP uh, design team. So they have a different, different technologies that they have to go through. It should be very well thought program design and then uh, coordinated on those lines. Okay, thank you. Okay, we do have a question in the chat. Um, how can the process of simulation be facilitated to support uh, technical vocation education and uh, suggestions are asked? And I think you just gave one, um, for example, the exoskeleton, when we have persons lifting like um, the buckets of cement or mixing it or lifting heavy equipment, uh, that would be one way um, we can use uh, simulation to decide, I, I think, um, you can correct me, um, whether or not the, the weight is, um, is too heavy and what would be, you know, a, a correct weight for, you know, the persons on the ground for lifting and so on, and for safety issues. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, could you elaborate a bit on um, how the simulation can be used there? 
Yeah, number one, with respect to the safety, um, when you have this kind of uh, digital models developed, you have some software where you can bring in this model and it will show you uh, what kind of um, challenges you may have, what kind of, what are the places where you have to fix the barricades, where then can be kind of fall or where, where there is a heavy uh, equipment movement, ma uh, manpower movement. And it will give you some kind of predicted uh, uh, risk uh, involved. And also when there's a crane movement in the sites, it will give you all the possible risk situations. And the same can be developed as animations and given a training on the site uh, on the day-to-day -day basis, which can help the site team to reduce the uh, risk involved during the construction activities. And also when it comes to, for example, a procurement, uh, for the construction uh, material procurement uh, and also the equipment procurement or the manpower procurement, uh, you will be able to decide uh, precisely because uh, you have developed the models, you know what is the timeline, what kind of activities has to happen uh, in a virtual model, uh, then you, you can predict what kind of uh, material, how much materials has to be procured on weekly basis, what kind of manpower is required, how much hours of uh, equipment uh, work is required, this kind of simulations can be performed. And also when it comes to the uh, contractual situations, when there is a kind of uh, uh, future situation, when there's a contractual disputes or uh, uh, result, uh, disputes or any kind of litigations. So you can uh, document the data on the site literally day-to-day -day basis. You can blockchain the data, uh, hashtag it, then you can reuse the data uh, during the contractual disputes and which can help you for better with uh, dispute resolution. And also when it comes to time uh, simulations, you have the BIM model, uh, which is for any kind of facility. You, you can link it with the timeline and you can do the possible simulation, how it has to be built, uh, what is the kind of activities to happen. And also for the cash flow uh, during the construction, uh, you, you have built the facility model and you can extract the quantities from the model. And then uh, you can predict the kind of cash flows which has to happen on day-to-day -day basis during the construction phases so that you know how much of cash flow is required on a monthly basis and so on. So uh, there are multiple simulations like for structural analysis, you have the model, you can bring that into the structural analysis software and do the simulations. And also maybe for the wind analysis, for the earthquake analysis, for the lighting analysis, you know, uh, multiple simulations can be done. And there are multiple softwares for each of these kind of simulations from different technology vendors. Okay, thank you for that very comprehensive explanation to my graduate students in TVET. As leaders, you are now aware or um, a little more aware of what types of um, technologies are available at the, the level where decisions have to be taken regarding staffing and um, buying resources and so on for your various projects. So these are things that you can bear in mind instead of um, just going with the, the traditional way of, of doing things. You have um, you know, access to resources to your team, your project team, that would enable you to, to do such things once they have those capabilities or you can include such a cost in your project so that um, you can benefit, you can gain the benefits from the reduction um, in, in risks, um, reduction in time and reduction in cost. So thank you very much for the response. Thank you. Uh, Deborah, can we go further? I think there is one more uh, person raised his hands for crimes and David. Yes, please. Yes, go ahead, please. You can ask your question. Yes, thank you. So I'd like to find out for those persons who are in the industry for a long time before digital, digitization has um, come about, how do you advise them? Because they have been trained in the whole old school and they are doing things the traditional way. How would you advise them? And they are a bit timid of um, being retrained or to go digitally, how do you advise them accordingly? Dr. Amarnath, I'll take this question. Okay, okay. Uh, thing is, uh, Francine, I uh, think I see not everyone is born on the same day. So each one is born on a different timeline and industry has been uh, growing uh, fast than what we had uh, really had as an input during our education. And there is a lot of 
knowledge divide among the people who are working in an organization. Some are new to certain technologies, some are unaware of certain technologies, and so there are certain few people who are not interested in technologies. So an organization is a diverse you know, conglomeration of people who have to be delivering for a common good for the organization. Your point is good. If this is where the training comes as a perpetual one for every industry. Then industry has to have a training department and it has to go on with basics, middle level, advanced level and explorative level. So these things are on a continuous basis. That is why training happens in an industry and the requirement for learn, unlearn, relearn and innovatively learn also comes into place. Hope this answers you, I mean, gets you an answer. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now, uh, uh, Deborah, can we go with the last uh, trainer? Yes, please. Yeah, Dr. Kali. Yeah, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Let me just share my screen. Yeah, we are just going to discuss on business simulations. Like uh, till now, there has been three presentations uh, which all of you have listened to. Uh, the first one, uh, Dr. Machandran touched upon the social angle, uh, tourism industry and other industries. Then Mr. Aravind took you through the structural simulations in the automobile industry, what you can do, how, you, how the simulations can be adopted. And Dr. Amarnath has taken through uh, the construction industry, how the digital transformation is taking place, where are the simulations you know, being used. Now I'm just going to take you through the business simulations. When I say business simulations, it talks about all kinds of business processes. And when we talk about business processes, it also involves the person, the behavior, how a person is going to behave in a given situation. So in the globally, business simulations are called serious games. Okay, uh, all of us must be very much aware of uh, a lot of games, uh, you know, video games or digitalized games which are available in the market. Uh, you have uh, strategy games, you have uh, you know, sports uh, played, on, played over the you know, digital framework. All those things are games. And when the business processes are you know, simulated in a digital environment, it is actually called serious games. So serious games are nothing but a computer game and simulation approaches are the technologies which are used for non-entertainment purposes. This is more important here. Uh, when uh, simulation approaches and the technologies for simulation, when it is used for non-entertainment purposes, for educational purposes, when it is used, for the business processes, when it is used, it is called serious games. Well, so types of business simulations can be uh, computer-based simulations, board games, which are physical in nature. We can create a simulated situations and then allow the team to play on that simulated situations. Many of the board games, which are even chess is a board game, which uh, you know helps us to uh, teach strategy Behavioral simulations, these are very, very important simulations which uh, takes place under the head of business simulations. So when we talk about behavioral simulation, it takes care of basically how a person has to behave in a given situation. Uh, in a business process, for example, if I take, I am a, a say business administration student, a post-graduation, if I'm doing MBA in uh, finance, and tomorrow I'm going to become a you know, CFO of a company or a CEO of a company. And if I'm going to control a manufacturing or a production unit, and I have to uh, know, I have to plan my advertising, uh, I have to plan my pricing strategy, I have to plan my marketing strategy, I have to plan my distribution strategy. So all the, all the things which are related, all the processes which are coming into the business uh, can be simulated and uh, the teams of students can be put into that simulation to really feel if they take a decision, a wrong decision, what will be the impact of the wrong decision in the output of the business? 
when you when you work on uh, for a year or so of course the simulation will not take uh, one year to go around if once you complete the cycle of decisions immediately you can you know give a command and the uh, simulation will give you the results of your balance sheet after one year where the company stands so like that even in a span of you know one or two days time uh, you can even play 10 you know 10 years of your business and then see how you you can grow your business and uh, these kind of games uh, simulations are already used in most of the business colleges man- business management colleges across the world but now this particular technique this particular you know bay, uh, simulation technology is brought into various other processes there was a question earlier like you know how you can uh you know train a plumber how you can train a mason how you can train a carpenter these simulation games are now coming to that extent uh you know where people are already into the job uh there are uh, physical simulation uh, units have already come only computer based simulations are yet to come uh, so without using the real uh, welding rods without using the real reinforcement bar for a, a fitter to you know learn there are simulated environment where it is digitally computer based simulations are made you can teach the people to bend the bar or you know weld the you know it can be you know 1g 2g 4g 6g whatever you know welding welding position you want to train them you can train them uh, with a computer based simulations which are already there in the uh, you know offering but when it comes to uh, uh, behavioral simulation and uh, uh, you know cloud based simulations on these kind of skill based simulations are still Uh, you know stand alone simulations it's not skill based i mean the cloud based simulations so when we talk about say simulation we also need to know about another word called gamification so when simulation we talk we say because it immerses the player in a copy of a real time real life situation i mean you're creating a real life situation digitally or in a you know in a computer aided model and allow them to get immersed into that suppose you are playing a simulated uh, uh, you know uh, 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 football game you become a player and the game takes you you decide where to move the ball where to hit the ball and you take a decision so that is a simulation whereas gamification is using the gaming elements okay so a simulation and a gamification or different technologies which are you know depending on the necessity of the you know context it is selected and used so when you see this sorry when it when generally the simulation or serious games or you know uh, gamification games everything is based on certain uh, you know 3d platforms and animation platforms the softwares which are used to develop are you know uh, 3d platforms and animation platforms something like unity and all there are many many such platforms so when the games and games game inspired uh, you know uh, designs are made only for fun and enter- entertainment whereas when you reduce the you know fun and entertainment but prepare it for a purpose that means it is teaching something it is training somebody maybe on a quality point or maybe on a safety issue maybe on a uh, business processes it can be you know a, a contractual process or it can be uh, a bidding process it can be a financial cash flow control process any any kind of or marketing process any kind of uh, business processes when you are talking about so there is a purpose so to cater to certain purpose if the game is prepared where the beh- the decision making of the person also comes into picture so those things are you know classified as a gamification and serious games serious games are advanced than the gamification because you have certain kind of gaming you know a model into it whereas gamification is only you are learning through a computerized with no no game play there are serious serious games will have a uh, gameplay component into it we'll see a little bit later what it is so generally the primary motive of uh, <coughs> serious games is to teach the players by creating awareness by providing information ensuring an attitude in a change suppose you want to become a pilot do you think that you will be asked to sit on the aircraft immediately on the first day certainly no you need to go to the simulator and you will be trained on the simulator maybe you know for uh, months together once you are really perfect 
and you are tested on the simulator for various reaction behavioral aspects you know on a various you know scenarios then only you are going to be you know uh, uh, given with a real you know aircraft similarly i i'm i i worked in a nuclear uh, you know power plant for more than uh, three three decades uh, if any operator for a nuclear power plant if he is going to be in a licensed for operating a nuclear power plant it's not that the first day when he joins after the graduation he is put on to the operation no this person will be trained on the simulator how a reactor is, how a power plant is going to run and this simulator training takes place almost for a year the person will be put into various scenario based testing and how the signals when when the signals are you know generated what is his reaction how much time he is taking to react to that situation whether he is taking the right action which is supposed to be taken so all those monitoring you know uh, takes place but again it is a uh, it's not serious games it is a physical you know uh, vocational simulation okay now <clears throat> the characteristics of these simulations it it will have a goal to achieve okay the business process or a techno technological process there is a goal to be achieved if somebody is put through this you know simulation once he is running through the simulation he will learn x y z concept and come out so that is a goal and all these simulations as we as we know very well when you go to a technical you know con con technical concept or a business concept there are rules to be followed so these simulations will have all those rules which are in the real life situation it is going to be there and these simulations need to have a feedback system also suppose if i have taken a decision what is the impact of the decision on the entire process entire business process or a technological process that feedback will come and you can also have competition like you can divide the team into number of groups and suppose if you want to run a, you know company a uh, business process is involved in a company you want to see that how the mba students could learn you can divide the students into five or six companies and each of them can play as a competitors and uh, whose companies you know bringing the better share value after 10 years of you know uh, running the companies that can be also done so these are the salient characteristics of a simulation the motivating factor for these simulations are these the main motivating categories or it it gives you an autonomy and develops a competence in the people who are going to play and it relates to the real real life situation or real situation of the business process or a technological process and the seven motivational factors which are defined as the control that means if i am going to play the serious game i will have a control over the process i learn it and i can uh, because i am i am asked to take decisions which are otherwise required to be taken in the real life situation so i am being challenged so when i am being challenged as a student learning student or a train a trainee i i i feel happy if when i see that whatever decision i am going to take if it is going to give me a good feedback i'll be very happy on that so then i can create a competition so when i am learning in a competitive environment i learn much better and i can create a fantasy uh, develop certain interest and you know the diversion like you know suppose you uh, somebody is a finance student and but the the uh, business process you know requires pricing strategy requires marketing strategy requires advertising strategy a decision to be taken on that so i can even uh, learn certain things which are you know diversified from my focus area and social interaction is uh, the next issue like you know uh, you can it, you can build in various stakeholders within the package within the simulation you can build in various stakeholders uh, i'll show you an example a little later so these stakeholders responses also can be you know pre pre assumed and simulated in advance of course in the uh, future it's going to be you know uh, artificial intelligence oriented gaming where uh, the responses will automatically get generated uh, using artificial intelligence but today uh, the responses are predetermined suppose i take an option on certain question the, the uh, what answer is going to come i may not know as a player but the system knows what response has to be given so that is already inbuilt well so to design a system like this sorry so to design a system like this we need to see this four quadrants okay one is we need to integrate a, a create a gameplay you know into it we have to create a user experience 
when i say user experience it includes you know interface components like you know to one person talking to another person if if I, if suppose i am a project manager handling you know a big project i may be uh, requiring certain information from my finance groups i may be in, uh, requiring something from my supply chain group i may be requiring something from a planning group so many informations are required so that interface components have to be built in and sensory experiences like uh, uh, when i said feedback the feedback will also give me you know uh, an uh, excitement or anxiety or even you know my feelings also has to be you know uh, embedded into it how how the sensory experiences are going to be created in this game that is that is where the serious you know gaming is going to play a role then it's not only a game now we also need to have learning from this so this learning means again we need to create a pedagogy and what are the learning experiences we want to give and what should be the learning outcomes from a, from that particular serious gaming so accordingly it is similar to uh, designing a course in a university you design a course uh, create a storyboard create a storyline and when you when you're going to take a digital uh, you know digital classroom uh, i mean uh, maybe udemy courses or course or courses when you're developing you create a storyboard and develop you know a lot of animations develop certain kind of you know a uh, quizzing pattern in, embedded into the course so that you have an interaction so all this all those things are going to be pre designed and embedded into this system that is where the learning part is going to be so these are four quadrants which we need to really you know uh, embed into this then comes there are professional simulations and serious games which i i mentioned to you like you want to become a pilot or you want to operate a nuclear power plant you have to be on a professional simulators in a professional simulators and serious games the difference is professional simulators are going to be a physical simulators and serious games are going to be computer oriented cloud based you can play over you know internet and then learn okay so there are certain uh, components which are common to these both simulators so both are you know safe and cost effective because you're not playing on the real environment suppose i want to learn a business if i am going to be you know put in a, a company to run a company and if my decisions are very wrongly taken the company will get doomed after one year or two years so which is not correct but in the simulation process i can keep on learning 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 i can make mistakes and then keep learning so it become the training becomes more cost effective in, in instead of putting the people on on the job training you put them on a simulated environment and the, there can be observation by the tutor there can be interpretation of the results there can be interpretation of the behavior uh, there can be interpretation on the decision making process the, the play, player is going to feel the reaction speed can be you know, observed and of course the, re the results are believable certainly and both can have game elements of course some of the uh, serious games or uh, uh, professional simulators cannot have a game elements like for example a nuclear power operation or a pilot training cannot have a game element but certainly a behavioral part when you are teaching it can have a, a game element of course challenges are there because you will be uh, integrating lot of scenario based you know uh, challenges will be created uh, competition is required so that a person learns really you know in a realistic sense and he also needs to you know pass an exam in a professional simulator and serious games also can have a scoring pattern you know where in, you know you can even decide the person should score certain uh, marking on the competition of course fun to use both both the things can be you know uh, uh, made little bit fun uh, for using so that people get you know motivation and encouragement and professional simulators basically are hardware hardware based it's not software uh, software setup it's a hardware based and it is mostly controlled by the instructor the scenario creation is maybe you know created by the instructor uh, sitting at the control room where you know control server he can create various scenarios just to test the trainee uh, what kind of reaction he is going to uh, demonstrate it is true for even the pilot training and after action review is possible by the instructor by the tutor whereas in a serious game which is going to be on a, a cloud based or a software based uh, there is there is nothing like after action review which can be taken by the Uh, instructor he he has to depend on the data which is going to be generated by the system as it is already designed for okay so these are the major differences between these two uh, i'll just take you through a small game of course the link is here you can go through the link 
I'll just take you through a small game and then show you how a game uh, is played. Sorry. Can you leave the leave the link? Can you can you the site the site up so we can get the link? I want to put yeah, it in the chat. I will give you. I'll I'll give you the link in the chat box later. Oh, I'll just show okay. you how it is. So Thank suppose you. Uh, suppose you are training some Uber driver. You know that Uber is a, a aggregator of a taxi. We have a, a Uber. This this is called a Uber game, which is freely available for anybody to play and see. So let's ride. So the game goes like this. Uh, you are a full-time Uber driver with two kids to support and a thousand dollar mortgage payment due in a week. Can you earn enough to pay the bill and make more than other players? So there is a, uh, a constraint which is already given in the game that you are a full-time Uber driver and you have two kids to support and you have a thousand dollars mortgage payment due in a week. So there's a constraint to the player already given. And can you earn enough to pay the bill? That is a question. That is a challenge given and make more than other players. So there's a competition created. So there's a constraint situation given and the challenge is already posed and make more than, can you make more than other players? That competition is you know, created. Now, when I click yes, so you have a difficulty level will affect how easy it is to earn. So when you're a driver, you, you, you may have an easy ride, you may have a difficult ride. So, okay, you, so the, the simulation will allow you to check, I mean, select, whether you want to get trained on an easier mode or you want to get trained on a harder mode. So, okay, so for initial you know, training, I take, say, for example, easier mode. So the easier mode says you start bright and early on the morning, pretty soon, you get your first ride request from Chris. But when you arrive at the pickup point, you don't see anyone waiting for a ride. What do you do? There's a, there's a question mark. So as a driver, I, I'm, I'm getting, getting as an Uber driver now. Okay, I'm trained, I'm getting training as an Uber driver. And as a driver, my behavioral aspect is going to be checked here. Whether I'll just wait for the person to come or I will call, suppose I'd select call. Then the man's voice answers the phone, I'll be right there, just coming out now, he says. Okay, now the question is, what, what will I say as a driver to the customer? So there's a customer relationship building also matters here. So, so there is an emotional, you know, emotions which are, you know, attached to this. So can I tell him, hurry up, will you? Or can I tell him, take your time? I select, say, take your time. So you, a few minutes later, a flustered man with a big back, backpack comes out of a nearby apartment. So I'm asking, are you Chris? So that's me, sorry about being late, he says as he gets in the car. Now, what, what should I do? He, he has you know, got into the car, I'm going to drive, whether I should keep silence or I can strike a conversation. So these kind of situations can also be created. Okay, this is just an example. I'll provide, I will certainly provide you the link in the chat box so that all of you can play and then learn for yourself. So, but as a serious game, this is only two situations given. I can you know, create many such situations and every situation when I select, the, the response will also be you know, generated. I mean, it should be in the pedagogy, it should be in the designing, uh, uh, you know, all the interactions, what question to be answered, what answers to, should be given in the given, in given circumstances. All those things can be you know, cap, uh, captured in the beginning itself at the design stage. And so once I'm going to play this game, obviously I'm going to, you know, the morning eight o'clock, I started my job so I can run, you know, up to evening five o'clock or, you know, eight hours duty or 10 hours duty. And the amount what I'm going to, you know, earn that will come here as a dollar. So as you, uh, as the condition is given in the first, uh, first paragraph itself, that I have to pay some thousand dollars debt in a week's time and I have to take care of two kids. So how much money I should earn per day? So that can be actually... Uh, that figure will be coming as I'm running the cap for many rounds. Okay, so this is just an example. So you can go through that example later part. I'll uh, just do that. So to conclude, uh, 
a business sim business simulations are nothing but creating uh, entire business processes or a real time situations on a virtual mode and you uh, practice you train the people on that particular you know uh, virtual gaming aspect bringing in all the emotions bringing in all the behavioral aspects also into it so thank you very much i think uh, i have given you a different kind of you know uh, perspective to the simulation now thank you i have given the uh, you know link in the chat box thank you we do we do have uh, two comments uh, yeah. We're asking whether there are websites that you can recommend for simulating a, a workplace um, situation or a, a classroom, in addition to the gaming website. Uh, well, see, uh, there are various uh, agencies. Uh, they create the simulation and uh, you know they sell it actually. The, those are okay. available. No, various. Okay. Uh, us based companies are there who create business simulations uh, even very high level even uh, for a ceo level a change management uh, there's a there's a simulation for change leadership which i i played i happened to play once you know it was run by uh, university of michigan uh, so like, like that uh, any any area you take there are simulations available okay and it's all on chargeable basis i can share with you based on your requirement at a later later stage but to learn uh, there are there are you know if you want to develop certainly there are certain platforms like unity is a software platform generally people use that you know unity as a platform to develop the uh, business simulations uh, but uh, to get yourself exposed this kind of you know uber game free business simulations are available on the you know net which we can just get exposed to but really if you want to get into the uh, you know real time simulations there are companies who sell the product on a license basis okay thank you adabra we are done okay so i'll ask ms bishop to uh, move a vote of thanks on behalf of the participants ms bishop is the team leader for the youth training employment and partnership uh, program ms bishop to our esteemed industry 4.0 trainers on behalf of the fiddle and james of ue and the ue of boston these participants Mr. Nigel Paris, the CEO of White Up Limited and the White Up staff, I wish to express our heartfelt gratitude and thanks for your dynamic presentation on simulations today. The information you shared with us today on various types of simulations truly was very exciting and challenged us to explore new horizons in Tibet. We wish you all continued success in all your endeavors and as you continue to share your expertise with the world, I believe the new paradigm shift with TVET and technology will become an everyday reality in our world today with the adjustment of the new normal. Again, I wish to sincerely thank you for your willingness to share your valuable time to conduct this workshop, and I wish you great success. Thank you. Thank you. Can we break? Just to uh, let the participants know, we will. Uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Bishop. <laughs> we will be uh, preparing your certificates of participation. And um, Dr. Krishnan, could you confirm whether or not we would be yeah. able to see the recording afterwards? No, we can. We can give them a certificate. Uh, you know, just to ask them to uh, type their uh, you know email IDs in the chat box. Uh, because it will be attendance verification. Okay, so we do have those um, those IDs in the roster, so I can uh, link you to that. Okay. And would how soon after would we be able to see the recording? Or it, you know, I know you may need to edit it. And where would it be available? Um, within a day or two. Okay, and would it be on YouTube, or you would give us a? Yeah, a we'll link put to it the... in a YouTube, and we'll share the link. Okay, thank you. So I want to thank you again for your valuable time and expertise that you've shared with us. Thank you. And we, we are really happy with being with you. Thank you.
Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Bye, bye. Thank so, you. Okay, bye, bye.